What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Dinner Wolf, and welcome to some more Bosnia Reacts to TLDR News EU. Putin's humiliating retreat from Kherson. Okay, so I was going to stay away from the whole Russo-Ukraine war for a while, because usually it takes many months for things to happen, for big news to happen. Needless to say, it only took a little while for big news to happen. As of me recording this, I just got up in the morning. I have my, my coffee right here. Um, and I woke up to big news. Uh, Russians have completely retreated from Kherson and the Ukrainian army has already moved in. Uh, not to all places. I believe, yeah, even like the Antonivka Bridge, one of the largest bridges that leads across the Dnieper River uh, near Kherson has actually been blown up by Russian forces. So the Ukrainians probably can't pursue them across the bridge. And uh, Novakakovka, where you would have that large dam and also the... The Dniepro uh, Crimean Canal that feeds uh, river water all the way to uh, Crimea because Crimea is a very dry place. Uh, I believe the on the maps at least it shows that the Russian forces are still in control of that area. Everything on the other side of the Dniepro River. But we're just going to get right into it, uh, right into the news. Uh, hopefully TLDR News is okay with me using their videos. If you guys are not okay with me using my videos, contact me freely. I'll take them down. I... You know, especially after the whole CGP Grey debacle, I'm just like paranoid <laughs> at this point. But um, the vast majority of people that I react to are okay with me using their videos, and hopefully TLDR News is okay as well. So, anyway, let's just get This video it. was brought to you by our sister channel, TLDR Business. On Wednesday, after weeks of speculation and denial, Russia's Defense Minister, Sergei Shoigu, and Commander-in-Chief, Sergei Surovikin, officially announced that Russia would be withdrawing from Kurzan City That's the in order city to re-establish defenses on the east bank of the Dnipro River. Now, while Ukrainian officials have expressed some skepticism, it looks clear that the Russians have indeed surrendered Kurzan. And this is obviously a pretty significant embarrassment for both the Russian army and the Kremlin. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what's happened, why the Russians have surrendered, and what all of this means for the war going forward. Okay, so regarding that Sergei Shoigu guy, the Minister of Defense of, of Russia, he served since 2012, I believe, as the Minister of Defense in Russia. So um, regarding him, he's actually from like an eastern Siberian town, Tanu Tavu Republic or whatever they call it, it's near Mongolia, I think. Uh, you can tell that he's not ethnically Russian. So, um, but that's not what the point I want to get to. He's the Minister of Defense. He's basically the, the leader of the army, the general of the army of the uh, Russian Federation. So I was thinking, well, surely he has to have been to like a, a very nice military school from Moscow or something. Maybe he served in the army and he proved himself that he was a very capable leader. None of that. As a matter of fact, he graduated with a degree from civil engineering in the 1970s he's a civil engineer by practice but he was only given the highest position in the ministry of defense simply because he's loyal to putin of course putin is deadly afraid of you know generals if a general doesn't like him he can easily overthrow them properly you would have a military coup so uh, Putin's only appointing generals that he can trust. Not necessarily that they're, you know, good good at warfare. Sergei Shogu is not even a, a general, if you ask me. So I have a funny feeling that he might have a second heart attack, and that heart attack might kill him. Uh, if Russia is to make any more positive gains on the battlefield anymore, uh, probably there's going to be a purge of leadership coming very soon. This usually happens uh, even after the Winter War. If they started losing the Winter War against Finland, uh, there was a purge going on. Uh, and they had to change up their strategies and everything. That's why I say don't put your guard down. Despite this being big news, them losing Kherson, uh, the Ukrainians should still not put their guard down. Like, they're, like I said, I think this is going to head to a general mobilization, meaning that there's they're going to mobilize literally everybody that they possibly can. For now, they're throwing their minorities in the battlefield, which is why there's such a low 
morale to to fight not not only among them but russians as well that a lot of times they just end, end up sending in tatars or chechens or dagestanis buryats all their minorities and notice how moscow and st petersburg very few people are actually mobilized in the war so they shouldn't put their guard down this is a huge victory on the battlefield but still the war's not over so let's get right into it as we detailed in our video on Tuesday, for the last few weeks, there's been near endless speculation that the Russians are planning on giving up Curzon. The 20,000 or so Russian troops in the city have been basically cut off from the rest of the Russian army since the Ukrainians started shelling the Antonovsky Bridge and the Novokova Dam, the two largest crossings in the area. And more than that, Russian positions within the city have been under increasing pressure since the successful Ukrainian counteroffensive in September. As such, Russian occupying authorities started evacuating the 60,000 or so civilians left in the city in mid-October, warning of an imminent Russian offensive. And over the weekend, Putin himself encouraged civilians to leave the city. And just last week, it was reported that Russian troops themselves were leaving government buildings and checkpoints. This surrender of Curzon was finally confirmed by the defense minister and commander in chief on Wednesday afternoon, who said that they were leaving to protect the lives of their troops. Now, it's worth watching this announcement, not least because it might be a significant moment in history. Former Kremlin advisor and hardline Russian nationalist Sergei Markov has already described it as Russia's worst geopolitical loss since the Soviet Union Ouch. collapsed. Okay, so that being said, uh, why are they retreating now all of a sudden? Well, the Ukrainians have uh, been at it time and time again to take over this region. They've mentioned it a lot of times in the media, oh, there's going to be attack coming, attack coming. Uh, the region of Kherson actually had uh, some, of Russia, some of Russia's finest soldiers and finest equipment. There are roughly like 20,000 soldiers were there and... Um, if they were to be encircled and captured, uh, they would basically lose their best soldier. And they've already lost their equipment, but at least they can save their soldiers from an attack. Like I said, the, the region around Kyrgyzstan is completely flat. It's treeless. It is the absolute most difficult uh, terrain to hold on to in the world. So uh, either way, if they let allowed an attack to happen, they would have eventually lost and they, they would have lost some of their finest soldiers. So it's better for them that they retreat to a safer position like they're doing now than staying there and potentially get in encircled or captured as POWs. Uh, that's what I think, at least. So now they can't really take all their equipment over because that would take a very long time. If you if you know anything about a tank, it's like 60 tons heavy. So uh, if you want to send a tank across a pontoon bridge, it has to go one at a time very slowly. It's a very slow process to get all your equipment out of there. They don't have that time. Okay, so most likely they just abandoned a lot of their equipment and the Russian soldiers just walked across or potentially even swam across the uh, Kirsten, uh, the Dnipro River. We don't know the, the details entirely now. So, But they've already like started setting up defenses on the other side of the river. And blown up a few bridges, probably so the Ukrainians can't pursue them. Uh, like I said, the, the, if they may manage to make it across the Dnieper River, the Ukrainians could probably can pr pursue them all the way to Crimea and potentially even lose Crimea. Uh, so, um, well, definitely uh, they would lose the wa access of water to Crimea. So they've already, like, like, like I said, uh, oh, I haven't said already, but the U Ukrainians have blown up the the Kerch Strait Bridge. It's still under repairs and it's only going to be fixed up until Ju june of 2023 putin announced so they can't really resupply that area that easily they their only uh, hope was to basically retreat across the river so so if anything uh this was the only thing the russian army could really do it's either that or lose lose your troops and like they've already mentioned they want to save their best uh troops that's that being said this is not over the war is really not over yet um it's just turned into a different type of warfare uh, now we see even the russians targeting uh power stations in ukraine so people would be left without power it seems like the russian army doesn't really want to even fight against the ukrainian army they just want to hurt the ukrainian people as possible so they'll move out of there so they'll empty the region uh, 
It's becoming a very genocidal conflict. I even read like they're even kidnapping a lot of Ukrainian kids and moving them into to Russia, probably to indoctrinate them. So they're, you know, become Russian. That's when a person's the, that's when the person's brain is still malleable and you can indoctrinate it with whatever. But uh, like I said, I wouldn't put my guard down if I'm Ukraine. There's much to be done still. Предлагается занять оборону по левому берегу реки Днепр. Понимая, что это очень непростое решение, в то же время мы сохраним самое главное жизни наших военнослужащих и в целом боеспособность группировки войск, держать которые на правом берегу в ограниченном районе бесперспективно. Кроме того, высвободится часть силы средств, которая будет задействована для активных действий, в том числе наступательного порядка на других направлениях в зоне проведения операции. Вот я согласен с вашими выводами и предложениями. Для нас жизнь и здоровье российских военнослужащих всегда является приоритетом. Мы должны принимать во внимание и угрозу для гражданского населения. Убедитесь, что все желающие из числа гражданского населения смогли выехать. Приступайте к отводу войск и примите все меры, чтобы обеспечить безопасную переброску личного состава вооружений и техники за реку Днепр. Есть маневр войск будет осуществлен в ближайшие сроки. Соединение части займут подготовленные в инженерном отношении оборонительные рубежи и позиции на левом берегу реки Днепр. Доклад закончен. Now, originally Ukrainian officials were skeptical of this announcement. On Wednesday, Zelensky took too. a cautious tone, insisting that Ukraine would move carefully. Mikhailo Podolyak, an advisor to the head office of the president of Ukraine, went on to claim that Kiev saw no signs of a Russian retreat and that Ukraine would move on the basis of intelligence data not staged television statements. However, as the day wore on, it started to look like the Russians had indeed abandoned Kurzon, with other significant figures in the Russian military admitting that their forces had indeed retreated from Kurzon and praising Sorovkin's pragmatism. Similarly, satellite Adira, data like is now showing the Russians are indeed setting up bricks. new defensive positions on the east bank of the Dnipro. And new satellite images from Thursday even suggest that they've established trenches in northern Crimea, which gives you a sense of just how bad the Russians themselves expect things to get. By Thursday morning, it looked like the Ukrainians had been convinced. Zelensky appointed four district heads for Kurzon's West Bank, which suggests that the Ukrainians are planning on a return to Kurzon very soon. And Polyak sent out a tweet suggesting that while Russian forces had mostly left, they'd essentially booby-trapped the city with mines and artillery. To all kill in all as then, many people it now as really looks like the Russians have actually left Kurzon. And this is pretty embarrassing for them. Not least because Putin claimed to have annexed Kurzon just a couple of months ago. But as well as being politically embarrassing, the loss of <coughs> Kurzon means that the Russians will have lost access to the northern Crimean Canal, which routed water from the Dnipro River to Crimea and provided 85% of Crimea's water. Now, I did check the maps this morning. Um, I, I follow live UA uh, map.com I believe that's the name uh, but it shows like a live map of what's going on there's many maps regarding the Ukraine war out there but I I follow that one and I still noticed uh, a large red you know block around this area of Kakovka uh, red in, uh, signifying Russia blue signifying Ukraine what territory they hold so as far as I know the Russians still tingly hold 
this part because it's on the other side of the Dnipro River, uh, this canal. Actually, it's just right behind this dam that you see here. That's where the um, canal begins, I believe. So, but if if Ukraine manages to hold on to that canal, but not onto the territory of Crimea proper, they can just plug up the canal again and you, Crimea will start running out of water again. And this time they don't really have the Kirk Strait Bridge to bring them whatever they want that easily for for many months, so. I don't know, this might be, we might be witnessing an entire rout of the Russian army soon. Yeah. And it's not even just about water, because Ukraine's success here will also help keep together the pro-Ukraine coalition in the West, even if energy prices spike over the winter, which is good news for the West. Unsurprisingly, though, the retreat from Kurzon hasn't gone down very well on the other side. Russian nationalist telegram channels were furious about the announcement and Russian state media took a conspicuously dejected tone. Predictably, some Russian nationalists have called on Putin to escalate. Markov, the former Kremlin advisor we mentioned earlier, has even called for a general mobilization. However, if anything, Putin seems to be going in the opposite direction. On Wednesday evening, the Russian foreign ministry suddenly announced that Russia is open to negotiations with Ukraine. Mm. Quote, taking into account the realities that are emerging at the moment. So it really... I'd be very cautious about negotiating. It sounds like a good deal. It's like it's going to end the war. It might end this war, but uh, there's no telling if Russia can come back just later. Um, maybe they can sit down and they'll say, hey, at least give us the Donbass and it's over. You know, the war is... Sounds like a good deal, right? You know, at least uh, Ukraine, the war will stop. People can come back to Ukraine. They can start rebuilding... But they could come back later at a better time when they build up their war economy and uh, general mobilization and train all tr more troops. And they can just go back and start the process again of annihilating cities and annihilating uh, Ukrainians. So I wouldn't uh, just, you know, I definitely wouldn't let my guard down because I don't think they're just going to give it up that easily. But we'll see, and I doubt Ukrainians will uh, want to negotiate either until they liberate all of their territory. Uh, because the Ukrainians are well aware of this fact as well, as I am. Like, they could, they could cede some territory now, you know, it's you would think that the war would be over. But they, they, they think themselves that the U Russians would be back one day and just carry on the operations. It does look like the Kremlin is more serious about peace negotiations than ever before. And it's probably no coincidence that this comes it just might be a, a few days fire, after but Reuters reported that the treaty. Biden administration was privately pressuring Kiev to begin peace negotiations. Now, obviously, all of the usual caveats apply. You can't really trust what the Kremlin says. And it's possible that all of this is just a ploy to buy the flailing Russian army some time. Hmm. But at least superficially, negotiations do seem more likely now than at any point in the previous nine months. Ultimately, though, we'll have to watch developments very carefully to see what happens next. So if you want to make sure you don't miss a thing, then subscribe to TLDR EU and you might all. Okay, so uh, that was a nice uh, short video uh, detailing what has been going on in Ukraine recently. Uh, I'll um, keep following the news on the ground, what's going on in Ukraine, and I can, you know, do more videos like this in the future. So anyway, thank you all for watching. As always, take care.